Hey guys, it's Molly. I have been thinking about a pour that I did a long time ago and it actually wasn't on video. It was a large scale black canvas with a metallic ring pour in it and it really almost looked like a tree. So Arteza sent me a bunch of their metallic paints in the pouches. I'm really excited to use them because I know what their Aztec gold looks like and I know what their pearl copper gold looks like. So I cannot wait to do these. It's gonna be a very simple pour and I hope it's gonna be really striking. Hello, my friends. You're probably wondering what the heck is going on. I wanted to do um, a split cup pour and then I was gonna pour black negative space around it and just do a ring pour. I did one of these a long time ago. It sold, I loved it. It really looks like tree bark. So I'm using all metallics, um, except for the white uh, is a gloss white, but I'm using Arteza metallics, pearl okay. copper gold. I'm using these little pouches, bronze, Aztec gold, Pearl Golden Hour, and then I'm using Amsterdam Graphite and Amsterdam Copper, which actually looks like bronze. So a couple of those look a little bit different. The bronze of Arteza looks like copper. So anywho, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna see if I can tilt this thing on my own. I've done my split cup. I did a couple videos. I'll see if I can link them before. I used to have a partition in the middle that I would take out, but now I just pour down each side and it ends up being um, like a multicolored ring. The rings come out really cool this way. So I'm just gonna start in the center. And when you're doing ring pours, you can do them with a thin consistency or you can do them with a thick consistency. So it really just depends on what you're going for. I like my rings to kind of hold and be kind of thicker so when I do it, I'm gonna switch and go the other way. When I do a ring pour, I keep my paints pretty thick. And a lot of you guys have been asking about consistency. So I will link below also my consistency tutorial that I have. Um, I made it a long time ago, but a lot of people have found it really, really helpful. I go through the different pours and the different consistencies of things. Oh, I'm talking and I mess my center up. I try to fix it. Oh no. Okay, I have a little swirly cue there in the middle because a little bit dripped out the side, but I am totally okay. This is beautiful. I'm going to pop the air bubbles real quick. Air bubbles are inevitable if you mix your paints and then automatically try to actually paint. <laughs> It almost blew up, okay. Ooh, my cup is gorgeous. I hope my painting turns out like my cup, wow. Okay, I'm gonna tilt a little bit and see where I can stretch it before I put the black on. If I put the black on now, and you could, but I find a lot of times it makes the rings on the outside kind of wonky. Some people also put black all the way down first, but I feel like it's a waste of paint. The only thing that it helps is for some of your um, lines not to slide over each other. But, all right, you guys, wish me luck. I'm gonna fill this thing. This is big, this is a 24 by 30 inch canvas. And I purposefully did not use paint to get all the way to the edges because I wanted there to be some negative space. Now, if you notice that all my rings are moving basically at the same speed, this is difficult to do and I have a feeling that I'm gonna knock over my cup of black paint. So if your paints are not moving, if your paints are not the same consistency, they will not move at the same speed. And so you'll get kind of wonky lines not tilting the same direction will also give you some wonky lines. So there's a lot of things that go into kind of, you know, doing a ring pour that people don't think about. Okay, so now I'm gonna do, this is where I'm gonna get paint all over myself, I just know it. Ooh, I had just enough, I had just enough paint to go around there. Now I'm gonna spread this just a little bit 
to the edges. That's why I painted my edges beforehand because if I don't cover them all the way, I'm not like super worried about it. But you'll see when I start to tilt this, some of the black will come into the lines or it normally does. And that's what I don't like about it. So I try to do this part kind of at the end if I want negative space around it. And just a little, I poured just a little too much black there. Gonna get around this side. Uh oh, I'm singing. I must be happy about this painting. Okay. Ooh. What I envision is the it touching the black and then some of it coming off here on the sides and then leaving the corners as black space. We'll see if that actually happens. I hope that you guys can actually see it. Maybe I'll move these out of the way for now. Okay, so it's starting to touch the black. And I want to curve it on around. And see how my lines are already getting a little bit wonky on the outside? That's because it's touching that black. That's why I put that on at the end. See, like right there? It's okay because I wanted this to be like negative space. Okay, I think I'm gonna turn this around at this point so that you guys will be able to see it. It's much harder to actually video these than it is to just make them on our own. This is almost like a black hole. It looks really cool. Oh, I love this. All right, let me spin this on around. Like a pizza. <laughs> Okay, all right, where am I going here? Where am I going? My paint's over on this side. So now I'm just getting it off the edges, off the corners over there. That's why I didn't use enough brown to go all the way off all the edges. So now it's just pushing that paint on around. Now I'm gonna bring it down this way. And now I'm just stretching those rings out a little bit. I hope you guys can still see this. Now it's just gonna be about composition. Where do I want to go? Okay, now the other thing that will make your lines wonky, and I see it, it happened right here, is if you have a piece of something in there. Oh, I love how this stretched off the side. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. My bracer bar on the back is probably gonna have some paint on it, but that's okay. So my paint is moving much slower now and that is totally okay. I know you guys probably can't see the whole thing. I'll be back in frame in just a moment. Okay, so now I've got that side. Huh. Do I leave it because I kind of like it offset. What do I do here, guys? I think, I think that I may leave it. Maybe I'll go off that corner. Yeah. I think I'm leaving this baby just like this. Just bringing my black down on the sides. All right, let me wipe my hands and I will show you this beauty. And I really don't even mind what happened there in the center. I think it's pretty cool. All right, I'll show you. Okay, it's so large, I have to get you in frame. I love it. There is my center 
my lines got a little wonky because I stretched it out, but I really do not mind at all because the overall piece itself, it looks 3D. I love it. I love those lines right there. I love how that stretched off the side. Can you see that? Oh, I love that little piece of negative space. You guys, let me know what you think. And don't forget to check out all my links below. I will show you this one when it's dry. I hope you guys can get how much shine is in this. I hate that the camera does not show it. And I'm not by any light, so you can't see it. But I am so pleased with how this piece came out. It is huge too. I love it. I don't know the orientation that I want yet. Um, let me turn it to its side. Here it is on its side and it is just absolutely stunning. I love it. I did get some air bubbles and a little bit of stretching and cells in there, but I love the center. I love how 3D that looks. I just, I think it's just kind of a striking piece. I really, really love it. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Yep, the painting. Bye.